This is something many of you have been asking me for a while now. You want a replica of my vault. You want something that you can see uh, in action, working. So I created this partial replica and this is video one of a series of videos where I'll show you from the very beginning how I created my vault and how I use my vault. Uh, in fact, how I use the timeline system in Obsidian to organize my entire life and business. So let's start with the containers. Oh, and by the way, uh, if you are a Patreon supporter, you'll be able to download all the vaults along the way. This is starting from almost zero from scratch and will evolve together. So the timeline system consists of three main parent folders, uh, which are the action containers, the static containers, and the timeline. In my particular case, I, still, I also have a, a, a fourth folder, a parent folder, which is the website, because I use Obsidian Publish, and that's why I added this uh, folder here. If you don't use Obsidian uh, Publish, and if you don't plan to use it, you can simply delete this or ignore it. At the end of the video, I'll show you where you can download and uh, air quotes here, install this vault to follow uh, uh, the progress. The action containers is where everything that is uh, in progress lives. And inside there, I have some subfolders. For example, I have clients, reading, tasks, and trips. If you are following my work for a while, you, re you recognize some of this and you already know what I do here. But again, this is gonna be a step-by-step. -step. Each video, uh, a, a new step uh, towards getting to where I am now with my, my fault. So clients, I have subfolders. You soon understand why I have subfolders. Uh, and inside I have a, a, a folder, for, a sub subfolder for files. Reading is where I all the clippings go. So I clip everything into this folder here. If I'm reading, it's action in progress. If it's in progress, it has to be inside an action container. And then I do something with, with this uh, article, whatever it is that I'm reading in the future. Uh, then there is tasks. Again, if you are following the channel for a while, you already recognize this. I have some notes where I create these tasks and they go to a, a homepage, but I'm getting way ahead of my myself here. We'll get there together. Trips is similar to uh, clients, the structure I mean, and it's only for current trips, okay? Now, everything that is in progress is here. So in my case, I have more folders, maybe double the number of folders in my Rio account. And, and I always keep this open and the other ones uh, collapsed because this structure is what I wanna see first when I open Obsidian. Everything that I'm working on is here. Then there is uh, the parent folder static containers. Inside we have the static containers. This is everything that supports my work, but it is not necessarily connected to these guys here. Some of it is, some is not. For example, family holds the family documents and it doesn't necessarily has to be linked to this. I don't know, maybe I'm filling a form and I need my passport number. I'm filling it online, doesn't have anything to do with the action containers or somebody calls and needs a number, I can click here and take a look at the number. So it supports, these are resources that help me work, but they are not uh, necessarily connected to these guys here. In reality, they rarely are. <laughs> this is our more uh, generic information. For example, I have ebooks. These are my actual ebooks, the, 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 the files. I have family where I, I keep all the documents. Uh, there is an episode of the podcast where I talk a little bit about this. So I have a folder for each uh, uh, person in the family. And every time, I, let's say I asked my father, a document is actually happening in the past. So I created a folder for him. So everyone, if I have a document about uh, from someone in my family, that person will have a folder here. Okay, I, I create them on, on the go when I need them. And I have one for a couple. Everything that belongs to both of us is here. 
uh, we'll, there, there will be a specific video just about this. Uh, I mean, there will be specific videos about many of these folders, but this one for sure. Knowledge base is also subdivided into folders and there is a timeline system folder here. Each topic has a folder and this one here in particular is where I'm going to put everything related to this, what I'm calling a course about the timeline system in Obsidian. From how-to videos to links to all my plugins, everything's going to be here. So you can always take a look at this folder and you'll see the files here increasing and things progressing as we go. Then there is templates. And again, because templates are a resource, they help me work. In this case, they help me create my notes. It is a static container and I have only three templates uh, evolving to maybe two in the future, but for now I still have three templates. And again, we'll talk about this in more detail in the future. Documents is uh, just a index, a summary of all the documents I have here. Definitely there will be a video about this and home is my home page. This is where I can see, I, I, I look at home as a, a desk, uh, my Obsidian desk, everything I'm currently working on from tasks to trips, everything is inside this node. Currently it is empty, but we'll build this, uh, we'll also build this uh, together, okay? And this is the page that opens. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here, but I, I can't help it. This is the page that automatically opens when I open Obsidian, you, because I'm using the home page plugin, which does that. There will be a video, a specific video about this in the future. Then the timeline is where everything goes when it's done, when I don't, I'm not using it, when it's not an, an, an working progress, a uh, work in progress any, anymore, when it's not an, an action container anymore. So let's use the clients as an example. So let's say I finish this consulting with this client as you can see, there is a, a, a clients folder here. So all the folders I once had here and the ones that I still have will also have uh, a counterpart here inside the timeline. So clients, as you can see in this example, client A and client B, they are not my clients anymore. And this is why they are now history. They are inside the timeline uh, container. And if I, I'm this, uh, if, when I'm finished the consulting with this client, what I'm going to do is move it to the timeline. And now I have one more client here, but the timeline is not only an archive. It works as an archive, but it's also kind of a long-term uh, static container because I don't know if a client contacts me uh, again in the future. And I kind of remember who that person is, I, I would perform a search here, find that person, and let's say it's client A. I can come here and take a look at all the files, all the notes I took about that client. Oh, I now remember who this client is, and I can reply with more context. And I'm not gonna do anything well, with this. I just replied uh, him or her, and that's it. I just went to the timeline to take a look at it. Now, let's say that evolves and that person wants to become my client again. I can then move this back to the action container because we are working together again. So you can see that the timeline is not only a space for uh, uh, archives, it, it is kind of uh, live, it's dynamic. I can bring things back to the action container folder. Also, it's a space where I can uh, send, sorry, I didn't mean to close this. Uh, it's also a place where I can move to where I can move uh, expired documents. So as you can see here, not only documents, but anything that is expired uh, inside the uh, static containers parent folder. So as you can see here, there's also a family uh, folder, subfolder inside a timeline. Let's say, for example, person A has an expired ID. There is a new ID now, so I can move this one here to family inside the person A subfolder and add the new valid ID to this folder here. You may be now probably asking why I keep all these old documents. 
I don't know, I've been doing this for a long time, is history. But one thing that I can tell you is that it has been helpful so many times. Sometimes I'm looking for uh, old information, connecting dots, and I can go back to a certain time, a certain uh, period of time, and look at documents and other information from that moment in time and find the answer I'm looking for. So I keep everything. It's part of my history. And again, the timeline will double as a archive. And also, if I need, even in this case, if I need to go back to old IDs, expired IDs to check some information, I can do this, take a look at that, and that's it. I'm not moving this back to the static containers or the action containers, but it helped me in a way. Okay, now let's take a look at some changes I did to the appearance of my vault, uh, set the files, the default files, and some other tweaks here that I did to the vault, and I'll show you how to uh, download and install uh, the clone of my vault in your system. First, let's organize this here a little bit because this is how I keep... Oh, I forgot to mention the website. We'll talk about this all the way at the end of this course because this is going to be the last thing that I'll be showing you, but I do use uh, Obsidian Publish and I'm really happy with this. There are some small problems that I'm not really happy with, but I, I really like it. I don't plan to, to move to another service. Okay, so let's go all the way down here and go to the settings. Uh, the first thing you notice is that I don't use that purple color. I use this green. Uh, some people think that I'm trying to create a replica of Evernote. Fun fact. It has nothing to do with that. This has everything to do with uh, old uh, CRT computers, the green phosphor monitors that I used in the past. So I'm trying to create this uh, vintage vibe. So this is the color I found that it, it, it is more close to what those monitors were in the past, at least my perception. So to change that, you have to go to appearance and here's the color. So this is the accent color. All I have to do is click here and change, choose a different color. This, are, this is the RGB of the color I use, uh, 45, 155, and 45. So if you change something here, let's move this all the way to, I don't know, red. And now everything has this color. Let's go back to my original color here. So that's it, this is the color I use, okay? Uh, there's nothing else that I change here. Sometimes I change this, the, the font size. There are some things that I keep tweaking here, but this is the most uh, important one. Uh, I like this color, I like this vibe. Then there is uh, files and links. There are two things I changed here. Uh, the first one, uh, where is the default location for, the, for my attachments? This is for everything that you drag into a node. If you drag a file into a node, where is that file? Where will that file be uh, stored in your Obsidian? So I choose a specific folder in the folder specified below. So that folder is files, but there are many file uh, slash files in my system. The one I'm talking about is this one. All my files, almost all my files go here. Uh, the other change is this one here. I'm not sure if you have this on or off. I prefer it on. I prefer the wiki links because this will update. It's easier to build the link because it's, all you have to do is start with the, 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 the brackets and start typing. It will show you uh, the notes that have a, a, a the title similar to the one you are ty uh, typing and you can choose it. So this is another change I did. Again, this vault and all the future ones are available for uh, the personal organization tier supporters on Patreon. Each post, each video will have a, 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 a you can see the download, you can uh, click there and download the file uh, below the post, okay? So once you download the file, all you have to do is double click the zip file to uncompress it and you get the folder because Obsidian, uh, the vault, is a folder. Then you can put this folder anywhere in your computer, but please don't replace your current vault with this. And 
I, I don't think it, it, it's a smart move to change anything on this vault because every time I publish a new video, I'll be uh, uh, making a new vault available. So I think the best course of action here is replacing uh, the folder with the, the, the new folder so you have the current version of the vault I'm discussing in the video. And if we click here, we have everything inside but here's a catch, not really a catch. This is how Obsidian works. Uh, you can't see it here, but I'm gonna show you uh, on a Mac. If you hit Shift Common Dot, uh, then the hidden folder, the one starting with the dot will show up. And this folder here is where everything, all the settings, all the Obsidian settings are, please, be careful with this folder, especially in your main account, your main vault. Uh, and don't change anything here. But what I'm trying to say is everything that I just showed you, the colors, the plugins, everything is already here inside this folder because it carries this subfolder dot obsidian. So if you, let's hide that again. So if you simply drag this here, to a, a, a spot in your computer, you're not dragging the dot obsidian folder and you need that to see all the settings, everything that is set inside this, this vault. So the best course of action is moving the entire parent folder to the place where you want to keep this folder. And again, do this every time you download a new vault, a new version of this vault. And as you can see here, uh, I'm adding the date to the zip file, so month, uh, I mean year, month, and day. So this is how you, you can make sure you have the, the most up-to-date file. So now that we, you have this, all you need to do is click here on the vault and manage vaults. And from here, you can open folder as a vault and point that to the folder. In our case, that's in the desktop but point it, look for, navigate to where you added that folder, the, the place in your computer where you, you, you put that folder. That's it for this one, but remember, this is just the first step. There are many other videos to come. We are building this together. And if you like what I do here, please support my work on Patreon, especially if you wanna download the vault. And by the way, some of these videos will only be available uh, for supporters on Patreon. Okay, if it was helpful, I'd appreciate your thumbs up. And again, if you want to support my work, you know what to do. Patreon.com slash Vlad Campos. See you soon. Thank you so much for your time.